In this video, we'll look at three simple reactor unit ops in ChemCAD. The stoichiometric reactor, the equilibrium reactor, and the Gibbs reactor. At the end of this video, you should be able to select an appropriate reactor model. The stoichiometric reactor, equilibrium reactor, Gibbs reactor, or kinetic reactor. You should be able to use the stoichiometric, equilibrium, or Gibbs reactor unit operations in your simulations. In the next video, we'll go in depth into the kinetic reactor unit operation. For examples in this video, we'll look at the esterification of methanol and acetic acid to form methyl acetate and water. We'll start with a feed that consists of equimolar acetic acid and alcohol, total flow rate 200 pound moles per hour. The feed comes in at 120 degrees Fahrenheit and 5 PSIG. The stoichiometric reactor unit operation does material and energy balances for a single empirically defined chemical reaction. You'll define a key component and select the conversion for that key component. When you run the stoichiometric reactor unit operation, the module completes the material and energy balances over the reacting system to determine the exit conditions and also calculates the heat duty. The stoichiometric reactor unit operation does not do reaction kinetics. The stoichiometric reactor unit operation does not do any thermodynamic equilibrium calculations. All that happens is material and energy balances. Let's take a look at this. Here I've set up a simple flow sheet with examples of the three simple reactors. You can see I've got a feed stream defined here. Let's take a look at this. And I have this set for 100. My example is actually supposed to be 120, so I'll go ahead and fix that. In the stoichiometric reactor, you get to pick whether it's adiabatic, isothermal, or has a fixed heat duty. So in this case, I'll leave this blank so it inherits the inlet temperature. You have to pick a key component for the system. We'll do this based on the methanol conversion. And we'll start out with a fractional conversion of 10%. The other thing we have to enter is stoichiometric coefficients. These can be done on a mole basis or a mass basis. We'll leave this in a molar basis. The stoichiometric coefficients are minus one for our two reactants, methanol and acetic acid, which react in equal or more quantities. And the products are methyl acetate and water, so that each of these has a stoichiometric coefficient of plus one. We have our inlet stream defined, we have our reactor defined, so now we can run the unit operation. It runs without incident. And if we take a look at the unit op streams around the reactor, and let's put the outlet into molar units and you can see I reached my specified conversion of 10% methanol of the incoming methanol. I consume also 10% 10, 10 of the incoming acetic acid and I make the corresponding amounts of methyl acetate and water. Now I could also if I wanted set the methanol conversion to 99.9% .9 conversion, run the reactor, and ChemCAD will dutifully calculate. On that basis, you can see now I've got a very high conversion of methanol, almost no acetic acid left, the appropriate amounts based on the material balance of the methyl acetate and water. If you're familiar with the sterification reactions, you might be a little bit concerned because of the equilibrium limitation on this reaction. Let's take a look at the next type of simple reactor, the equilibrium reactor. In this case, you can establish one or more equilibrium reactions. You need to specify what phase the reaction occurs in. You specify the approach to equilibrium, and you do have the option of specifying your thermodynamic parameters on your own rather than using ChemCAD's database. If, in that case, you can also establish the units you want to use so you can enter your thermodynamic data in the units that you have it in rather than the flow sheet units if those aren't the same. So let's now take a look at the equilibrium reactor unit operation in ChemCAD. Uh, my inlet stream needs to be at 120, 5 psi. Inlet methanol is 100 pound moles an hour. Inlet acetic acid, 100 pound moles an hour. 
When we set up the equilibrium reactor, we need to tell it how many reactions we've got. We'll start with one. We can specify a pressure drop across the reaction. You need to specify the reactor type. In general, we're going to be using the equilibrium reactor. The shift reactor and the methanation reactor are specialized models. You need to specify the phase. You can have the reaction occurring in the liquid phase, either by itself or with a corresponding vapor phase that's in thermodynamic equilibrium, but no chemistry occurring in the vapor phase. You could specify a vapor phase reaction with some liquid present. In this case, based on my temperature and pressure, I know this is going to be a liquid phase system. We'll establish this as an isothermal system, again at 120 degrees. And what we're going to do is specify the approach to equilibrium for each reaction we enter. So I'll click this approach factor, say OK, and I come up with this data screen. I'm going to base my approach to equilibrium on the methanol conversion. I want it to ap approach 100% of equilibrium. That's what this fractional approach means. Now, I've got four components to deal with. I've got my methanol reactant. I've got my acetic acid reactant. I've got my methyl acetate product. And I've got my water product. The stoichiometric coefficient is going to be minus 1 for each of my reactants. And when we form the equilibrium constant, its exponent is also going to be minus 1. Same thing for acetic acid. Methyl acetate has a stoichiometric coefficient of 1. Similarly, water has a stoichiometric coefficient of 1. So we'll say OK. Now we can run the equilibrium reactor. It runs without incident. Let's take a look at our products. And we'll again put this into molar units. And you can see that I'm actually closer to 93.5% conversion, not 100%. So um, when I looked at 99.9%, .9%, I actually violated the second law of thermodynamics. The equilibrium reactor will catch this. The stoichiometric reactor will not. Now let's take a look at a more complicated case. I'm going to add 10 pound moles an hour of ethanol to the feed. And I'm going to add another equilibrium reaction. So now I change my number of reactions to two. I can say OK. I'm going to get a chance to edit this if I want to again. I'm not going to. I've got my second reaction. I'll make ethanol the base component for this second reaction. I'm reacting ethanol and acetic acid to make ethyl acetate and water. And again, put in my stoichiometric coefficients. Now, if I'd wanted to go back and change reaction two, I can click on this edit specified reaction, excuse me, and go back to reaction one. And it will take me back to this screen. If I say OK, it just steps forward through my different reactions. Now let's run the reactor again. Take a look at my products. And you can see that I've reacted less meth methanol than I did before. I've reacted most of my ethanol. I've generated water, ethyl acetate, methyl acetate, and consumed more of my acetic acid. So that's how you handle multiple equilibrium reactions in parallel. The third reactor type we'll consider is the Gibbs reactor. The Gibbs reactor minimizes the free energy of the products of the reactor to determine the, react, the product mix. It doesn't look at individual equations or equilibrium between reactants and products. It simply looks at all components in the, the simulation and does an atom balance between the feed components and the product components to determine the product composition. The Gibbs reactor doesn't size the reactor. It doesn't do kinetics. It doesn't use a user supplied reaction. So let's take a look at what the Gibbs reactor does. For the Gibbs reactor example, let's take a look at the feed stream. You can see it's at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 PSIG. Same composition as before, 100 pound moles an hour of methanol and acetic acid, 10 pound moles an hour of ethanol. In the Gibbs reactor, 
specifications. I'll set this again to be isothermal. I could specify the pressure, pressure drop. I could specify heat input if I wanted. These convergence parameters have to do with how ChemCAD does the trial and error calculation of the product mix. But this is all you specify in the simplest case. You can see after you say OK that it's doing an atom balance on the system, numbers of hydrogens, carbons, oxygens, then element one, element two. If I had other elements, these would be filled out. And you can see I've got the atom count for each molecule in the system. I can run the reactor now. And when I look at the product mix, we're going to get a, a somewhat unintuitive answer which is that I make a lot of water, I make actually a lot of n-propyl acetate. That's because the Gibbs reactor is not tied to specific equilibrium relationships or reaction stoichiometry. ChemCAD has basically looked at all the carbons, hydrogens and oxygens available in the feed, and reassembled them into this mix of products. One thing you can do in the Gibbs reactor is eliminate some components from being considered the, in, when the final product mix is being calculated. This is in the inerts tab. So for example, I might say, I don't want to calculate any propyl acetate being present in my product. I can say, okay, the screen doesn't change. If I run it again, take a look at my product mix. You can see that now I'm not making any propyl acetate. We've now stepped through the stoichiometric reactor, equilibrium reactor, and Gibbs reactor. You should be able to use any one of these three to do simple reaction calculations. In the next video, we'll take a look at the kinetic reactor unit operation.